Hello, I'm Carol Caparosa and I'm the founder of Project Knitwell. Project Knitwell is a nonprofit organization in the Washington DC metro area. And I am thrilled to have the opportunity to be the non-European guest speaker for the third annual European Wool Day. And I'd like to introduce our executive director, Lauren Brennan. Hi, I'm Lauren Brennan, the executive director of Project Knitwell. And our mission is to help those facing challenging circumstances by providing knitting instruction and shared community opportunities to promote wellness and resilience. In our presentation today, we look forward to highlighting why we do what we do, uh, the specific programs we offer and who we serve, and what our evaluation data has found and our future direction based on what we feel our strengths are and how we can expand the conversation on why knitting is good for you. I started Project Knit Well because of an experience I had being the mother of a pediatric patient almost 33 years ago. My infant daughter was seven days old when she was rushed to MedStar Georgetown University Hospital. She was in dire condition and was later diagnosed with multiple congenital heart defects. And she had her first of many surgeries the next day at eight days old. Um, at the hospital, I was mostly fearful, worried, sad, and I felt very helpless. There wasn't a lot I could do for my daughter as her mother, and it was very, very hard for me to concentrate and focus. I knew how to knit, but I hadn't knit in years, but someone sent her a hand-knit sweater, and a bell went off in my head, and I said, uh, I'm gonna go home and get my stash, and I started to knit, and almost immediately, I felt calmer, a little more peaceful, and I actually even felt productive. Um, I felt I could focus better. Years later, I went back to Georgetown Hospital and volunteered to teach other mothers how to knit. And immediately, I could see that it made a difference in their lives. And at that point, Project Knitwell was, had begun. Project Knitwell's tagline is knitting with a purpose, wellness, comfort, and community. These are the pillars of why we do what we do. And we like to think of each of these three pillars of our mission as rooms within our house. We know that knitting helps foster wellness and nourishes us. It clearly brings comfort and studies show the rhythmic motion reduces stress. And finally, the community holds up the roof where we all can gather together and learn with a worldwide community of knitters. At Project Knitwell, we knit with a purpose and we embrace knitting as a purposeful research supported intervention that can help people in a variety of circumstances. Project Knitwell is proud to say that we have taught over 7,000 people to knit over the last 13 years. Let's move on to the kinds of programs that we have. Essentially, we have two types of programs. We have an in-person program, which primarily takes place in healthcare centers and hospitals and community organizations. And we have two virtual programs. Our in-person programs include both working one-on-one -on -one and then also in groups. For instance, our trained volunteers who are the knitting instructors, they can work with patients who are receiving chemotherapy. They can work in a pediatric playroom of a hospital. Our method of teaching is to fundamentally to keep it simple. Each person that we work with is provided with a starter kit, which includes a ball of yarn that is already cast on for them. They also receive a darning needle for finishing and our 28 page resource guide with photos and directions on how to get started and also information about the comfort of knitting. We also have two virtual programs, Knit Well in the Cloud, where we assign an instructor to teach a new knitter one-on-one -on -one via the Zoom platform. We also offer a virtual program called K2 Together, which essentially is an opportunity for knitters to come together monthly to knit together in community and discuss a topic ranging from the wellness benefits of knitting to knitting humor, to learning more about the history and culture of knitting. 
We're so proud to also invite all of the graduates and former participants of our program to join us in this setting. As I mentioned earlier, we started at one hospital working with mothers of children who were sick. Currently, we are working in multiple sites, hospitals and community organizations, and with a variety of populations. And these populations include. We are focused on connecting with those facing stressful challenges in a number of focus areas, including our foundation in healthcare, working with patients and caretakers. In addition, we have expanded our reach to include mental health awareness and recovery programs, transitional populations, working with Afghan newcomers and those that have been recently incarcerated that are transitioning back into the community, along with those in the education arena, students, teachers, and counselors who are facing unprecedented levels of burnout. We also work with the military populations and veterans and their family members. We have learned many things in the past 13 years from our participants, and many of the things they tell us we hear over and over again. For example, many of our participants say that they have a great sense of accomplishment after they've learned to knit and completed a project. Constantly they are saying they feel calmer, they're not as stressed, they're very proud of themselves, and we often have especially young people saying how much fun it is. So I'll just read you some of the testimonials that we receive. I am so proud of myself for turning the ball of yarn into a scarf I can wear. That was from a 15 year old patient at MedStar Georgetown Hospital. Knitting has been very therapeutic. It's satisfying watching something come together after working on it for a while. My instructor is great at guiding me along. That was from a nurse at one of our local hospitals. I look forward to knitting to relax and breathe. It really takes my mind off of things. It gives me peace of mind. That was from a mother that we taught to knit. And the last one, Project Knitwell has been wonderful for both patients and family members. It is social and many friendships have been forged through knitting. It connects them to a community. And that is from one of the child life specialists at Georgetown Hospital. One specific program we would like to highlight is our program with Friends of Guest House for recently incarcerated women re-entering the community. Challenges that they face can be translated into the work that they do in their knitting projects. Friends of Guest House recently shared with us that the four biggest challenges that these women face include not knowing where to begin, family strain, finding employment, and mental health issues. We find also that the patience and perseverance that it takes to complete a knitting project can build a strong sense of self-efficacy. And finally, having a partnership with someone that is helping you learn to knit and helping you feel as though you have the ability to persevere and have that patience is really key to what we do. At the same time, they're igniting happiness chemicals and uh, the ability to ignite both serotonin and dopamine when they're completing projects and knitting in a repetitive and rhythmic way. Fundamentally, we provide the opportunity to learn to knit with the knowledge that knitting is good for you. Project Knitwell also was part of a research study that was conducted by two oncology nurses at Georgetown University MedStar Hospital, where knitting was used as an intervention in, in order to reduce compassion fatigue. Here is one of the authors in her own words. When I first learned to knit with Project Knitwell, I was working as an oncology nurse. My colleague Christina and I discovered many of our nurses were feeling burned out. So we asked the Project Knitwell volunteers to teach us how to knit. It began as a simple project, but over time, our nurses, after learning to knit, had increased rates of compassion satisfaction and decreased burnout scores. Later, I worked with Project Knitwell again when my son was sick and in the NICU. It was not allowed to hold him, but they helped me to finish this blanket so I could wrap my son and provide him some maternal comfort. 
My example is just one small example of the many wonderful works that Project Knitwell has done. The future of Project Knitwell lies in our continuing ability to help more people who are in stressful circumstances learn to knit. We are giving them a wellness tool, the ability to knit that they can hopefully use for a lifetime. We want to work hard to ensure that the general population knows that knitting is good for them. We want to be part of more research and we want to connect with like-minded people and other organizations who are doing similar work across the world. Those of us who already knit know that it's good for us, but let's work together to move forward and let others know the profound impact that knitting can have. Thank you again for including us in uh, the third annual Wool Day. If you would like more information or would like to join any of our virtual programs, you can contact us directly via our website at www.projectknitwell.org.